So my name is Alex. I've been around BBD for about seven to eight years, so some consider me one of the oldies by now. And today I'm going to be talking to you about continuous learning. So I found this very interesting quote um, that says, the only thing that is constant is change. And I know we all live in a really, really crazy world, and I'm pretty sure that even though this quote was uttered two and a half thousand years ago by some Greek philosopher, even he would be quite amazed as to how accurate it is still today. The world has never moved at a faster pace that is doing so right now. And factually right now, it is the slowest it will ever move again. News travels the world in, in milliseconds. Globalization has seen um, economies and countries become completely intertwined. Our industries, processes, governments, institutions, our morals and religions are all no longer contained by the set traditional borders. We have more freedom, um, we have more freedom than we have ever had before in our lives. And yet there's, uh, there's a growing uneasiness, a tension and almost a fear. But why is that? Well, like I said, we have never been free in our lives, but right now we are competing in a completely global market with free flow of resources and labor, and with millions of competitors, many of whom are able to compete at a much smaller price than you can afford to, and with what the media would like us to believe is a shrinking demand for human labor, everything can become a little bit terrifying. I'm sure you've all seen the headlines that say 80% of all existing jobs are going to be erased by AI and all the up and coming tech. And while these headlines are designed to induce, induce fear and generate clicks, the idea that the world as we know it is changing is completely accurate. Think of a field like data science. Data science was not around just five years ago, and right now it is one of the, sought, one of the most sought after jobs in the world. And with medical advancements, where doctors are promising that humans are going to live to 100, 120, even 200 years old, all of us are going to have to change our careers halfway through our lives. And so we become faced with the question, what can we do to upskill ourselves in a world that is changing every single day? Well, the hard truth is that there's not one skill or level of knowledge that can necessarily guarantee your success. And the only, only one thing can really help you, and that is um, learning how to learn. Developing the habit of learning is going to be your most valuable skill in this changing world. And that is also not just learning for the sake of learning, but also learning for your own self-improvement. Now let's throw back to a bit of a simpler time in everybody's lives. Imagine you're 10 years old, life is pretty easy. You know, we can all agree on that. Now, Think about, so now your parents decide that you, they are going to whisk you away and move to, literally to the other side of the world. You land up in a country where you do not understand the language, you do not understand the culture, and then as a cherry on top, on the second day of arriving in this new country, you have to go to school and you have to start learning new things in a language that you really do not understand. And that's exactly what happened to me when my family decided to move to South Africa. I did not know any English, I didn't know what was happening, but I just had to learn and I had to adapt. Uh, but we can all agree that when you're 10 years old, learning new things is, becomes a little bit more easy, it's a little bit more intuitive. So what happened to me when I grew up, became a little bit older. So I went to varsity, I studied computer science, I was very dead set on being a developer. My whole family are developers, this was just a natural course of progression for me but we all know that things did not quite work out the way you intend them to. So when it came time to find my first job, I actually landed up being a business analyst. I had no idea what it was all about. I didn't know what a business analyst did. I didn't know what skills they needed to have. And so I had to learn on the job. I was lucky enough to be surrounded by people who were able to teach me new things, but it was still quite a big change um, in terms of what I was used to. And even when I started my, new, my job, so I went into banking, but even in banking, um, even in banking, I went from being in global markets, I went to payments and collections, I then landed up in risk management, and I actually eventually became a specialist in banking risk and regulations. And over the past couple of weeks, while I've been preparing this talk, I've had some time to reflect how did I get to where I am now? How did I learn so many new things in a relatively short period of time? 
So just like most people I went through the traditional schooling system, uh, we all can agree that it's a little bit outdated, right? It doesn't quite teach us the skills that we need in the real world. And I think the only thing that really comes out of the traditional schooling system is um, you learn time management and you learn how to be a responsible human being, or at least, you know, a little bit. I then went, to, uh, went on to do a couple of courses while I've been working, but even those, those have been all very theoretical and they were very hard to apply in the real world. So I found a new and better way to learn new things, and that is learning from other people. And that was, I learned how to speak English from other people, and I also learned how to calculate the capital requirements for derivative in the trading book from other people. And I'm sure that I was that one very annoying person constantly asking questions. You know, you just want to tell them to go away and not bother you. But I was that person constantly asking questions. And that's what allowed me to learn a lot of things from other people. And obviously, when you learn new things, you need to practice because practice makes perfect. And I'll give you a very good example about practice. So since moving to South Africa, I haven't been able to practice my Russian all that often. I really speak to my parents maybe on the weekend, every other weekend. And so my Russian has started becoming a little bit rusty because, well, I'm not practicing it all that much. And it, ha it has become so bad that without practice, a lot of native Russian speakers now tell me that I speak Russian with an English accent, which is meant to be my first language. And then, just like everyone else, I got really, really busy, you know, work gets very busy, you really don't have time for yourself. But I really love learning new things, so I started looking for new ways to try and fit learning new things into my busy schedule. And I came across um, a TED talk by a guy named Josh Kaufman who, ha who was faced with exactly the same problem, and he was also looking for a way to learn new things. And so he came up with a um, little methodology, a little framework, that basically says that you can learn a new skill in just 20 hours. So I'd like to show you a bit of a video where he explains this, this methodology. And here's the method. It applies to anything. The first is to deconstruct the skill. Decide exactly what you want to be able to do when you're done, and then look into the skill and break it down into smaller and smaller pieces. Most of the things that we think of as skills are actually big bundles of skills that, that require all sorts of different things. The more you can break apart the skill, the more you're able to decide what are the parts of the skill that will actually help me get to what I want, and then you can practice those first. And if you practice the most important things first, you'll be able to improve your performance in the least amount of time possible. The second is learn enough to self-correct. So get three to five resources about what it is you're trying to learn. Could be books, could be DVDs, could be courses, could be anything. But don't use those as a, as a way to procrastinate on practice. I, I, I know I do this, right? Get like 20 books about the topic. It's like, I'm going to start learning how to program a computer when I complete these 20 books. No, that's procrastination. What you want to do is learn just enough that you can actually practice and self-correct or self-edit as you practice. So the learning becomes a way of getting better at noticing when you're making a mistake and then doing something a little different. The third is to remove barriers to practice. Distractions, television, internet, all of these things that get in the way of you actually sitting down and doing the work. And the more you're able to use just a little bit of willpower to remove the distractions that are keeping you from practicing, the more likely, li likely you are to actually sit down and practice, right? And the fourth is to practice for at least 20 hours. Now, most skills have what I call a frustration barrier. You know, the grossly incompetent knowing it part. That's really, really frustrating. We don't like to feel stupid. And feeling stupid is a barrier to us actually sitting down and doing the work. So by pre-committing to practicing whatever it is that you want to do for at least 20 hours, you will be able to overcome that initial frustration barrier and stick with the practice long enough to actually reap the rewards. All right? That's it. It's not rocket science. Four very simple steps that you can use to learn anything.
So like Josh said, it's really not rocket science. All it requires is just a little bit of commitment from your side. And I've actually been trying to implement his methodology into learning R for data analytics myself in the past couple of weeks. So it's all fine and well to know how to learn new things and realize that yes, you are learning new things, but what is the benefit of actually learning? So one of the most obvious benefits of constantly learning new skills is that intentionally or unintentionally, you are going to open new doors for yourself. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, when one door closes, another one opens. So while I agree with the sentiment that um, there are always new opportunities to be realized in our lives, I don't quite agree that you have to wait to lose something in order to passively start looking for something new in your life. And that's exactly what this quote suggests. If we think of the people that we respect in our lives and the people that we look up to, they don't complacently sit and um, sit and, and just accept what life has given them. They seek new opportunities proactively. And by doing so, they take charge of their own lives. So the habit of continuous learning is, then a, is an essential component of having the confidence necessary to create new opportunities in your life. So by constantly learning your skills and developing as a person, you won't only open new doors for yourself, but you're also going to be able to close all doors when you're ready to close them, instead of waiting for them to knock you off your feet. The process of learning also has benefits far beyond simple human functionality, because learning is as much as about yourself as it is about your capabilities. For thousands of years, humans have pushed themselves to work harder, to think more deeply. We've explored the world, we've conquered the highest peaks, we've explored the deepest oceans, we've taken flight, we have ventured out into the reaches of the universe. And while some of these developments have been achieved over time by pure necessity, the process in most cases would have started with just simple curiosity. Humans have never, ha have never been satisfied by our own knowledge. We've always aimed a lot higher. And for most of history, it's been a very long and slow and often very bloody process. But through the persist persistence of the generations before us, we now have a lot more knowledge and information available at our fingertips than we have ever had before. But interestingly enough, this instant access to information has almost had the opposite effect on our desire to learn. We've settled for our newfound ability to access information to only as and when it's really necessary. And while the majority of our generation accepts this as the new norm, those who have pushed back on this norm um, find themselves more in demand than ever. And a lot of psychologists have actually confirmed that your regular engagement in learning has benefits far beyond just your work. It's got benefits in your health, your happiness, personal development, your motivation, and a sense of achievement. Learning can also help you stay relevant in your day-to-day -day life. Through the period of industrialization, humanity was driven by brute force. The major majority of people were working in very labor-intensive roles, and often these roles um, required very little skill. But as the capability of machines uh, improved and robots have started taking over, a lot of those jobs have disappeared. And the late 1900s saw the rise of office spaces filled by tons of people just sending pointless emails. And doing well in this time meant that um, you just needed to keep doing your mundane work and you didn't really need to add too much value. And for much of the last 200 years, if you were just present in your job from nine to five, you were considered relatively safe in your role, if, uh, whether you were adding value or not. So what are the people that actually succeed in this time? What have they done right? Well, there's two things. Number one is they inspire people. And they do this by either genuinely bringing out the best out of their colleagues or by creating some sort of real value to the companies. And the second is despecialization. So these are the people that have become the masters of the skills in their fields. So when you spend years refining your skill in a certain practice, it can, be, it can become very difficult to uh, look at your process and, and, and systems in an objective way. It becomes very hard to see how you could improve what you're doing. And we convince ourselves that by just focusing on the process, we're going to perfect it, 
with, ironically, it actually does the opposite. So the problem comes from us not being able to take a step back. Learning a completely new skill in a completely new area in a com can change, um, can really lead to a brand new way of thinking that changes the way you do your everyday work. And all of a sudden, you're going to be able to see that you've built up certain habits that are actually holding you back. They're preventing you from becoming productive. Often, when I've stepped back and really questioned my daily activities, I've realized that there's a number of things that I've worked on during the day just to try and push back on the things that I really didn't want to. So by breaking this habit, I start the things that I don't really want to do first, and then through that, my day becomes a lot more productive. Another great benefit of learning, which I'm sure all of us are very interested in, is the increase in the money that you can potentially earn. So the price that you're able to charge for your services is directly proportional to the value that your customer perceives it to be worth. So if you're charging a lot of money, then your customer is probably going to think that you're really good at something. And in the current global market, where it's just as easy to hire a freelancer from across the world to do your internet marketing as it is to hire someone locally, you really need to convince your customers that the premiums that they're paying for your service are really worth the investment. So for the last decade, it has been surprisingly easy to approach a small business and induce terror by telling them that by not having a website or not having a consultant on site all the time, that they're going to be left behind by their competitors and obviously charging them a lot of money for this. But people are starting to catch on to this practice and it's really becoming hard to pull wool over people's eyes. So by learning new skills and, and improving your existing skills and becoming a guru in a certain field, you're going to become that go-to person in your field. And when you've got a waiting list of people wanting to work with you, it's going to suddenly become a lot easier to charge the money that you've proven yourself to be worth. It's in our human nature to mix with people similar to ourselves. It's much easier to chat and relate to people with similar lives and similar experiences to you. But this way of living can really limit your creativity and ability to think critically. Learning new skills, particularly in a completely new and unexplored field, can often expose us to people that you would have never had the opportunity to meet before in your lives. People with different professions and hobbies and interests, and the ability to learn from these different people becomes extremely important. Some of the biggest realizations um, in my life I've had from resulting from putting myself in a completely different situation with people I would have never been exposed to um, before. And the thought of doing so can be a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you're a little bit introverted and you don't like people like me. But I've, I've learned to find it extremely liberating to have my ideas challenged because I come out of that experience knowing that my ideas are more informed than they have ever been before. Um, and the only way you're ever going to be able to do this is by allowing your ideas to be dismantled, humbling yourself, and then admitting when you're wrong as well. So when we think about some of the people in history that were bold and they were brilliant and they were brave, they only became like this because they took gambles and they took risks that didn't pay off. But they were humble enough to admit when they were wrong, they learned from their situations and then they applied these new learnings to their future. And the last benefit of learning, which is just pure enjoyment. So for many of us, the idea of learning new things has really been damaged by years of traditional schooling. Traditional schooling has really only, only really gives us the skills to be productive in a factory of the 19th century, where we know now that our lives are very different from what they were before. So we can really see a clear mismatch between the skills that we need today um, to add value in 2019 versus what the, the current schooling system actually gives us. So we really need to rediscover the act of learning for the art of learning. So it would be amazing if all of us could become gurus in machine learning and artificial intelligence and data science, but I would argue that many of us are not quite ready for the step yet. And that's not because we are incapable. I'm sure all of us are very smart people. 
but it's because we, it doesn't quite solve our problem. We have lost our ability to enjoy the process of learning. So for many of us, that desperately, what we desperately need is perhaps not like a PhD in computer science, but rather um, what, what we rather need to go do is join a pottery class um, in your local community because this is what's going to rekindle your desire to learn new things. But rediscovering the joy of learning, um, it, rediscovering the joy of learning may not come from heading to a night class on investments, but rather maybe taking a martial art class during your lunch break on a Thursday. And sometimes becoming better in the field that you want to excel in doesn't necessarily mean that you need to develop complementary skills, but quite the opposite. So for those of us who work in very professional industries, getting outdoors and maybe doing something with our hands is, what going, is, is what's going to develop us more as people. Similarly for a gardener, they might not take any joy in doing a pottery class, but rather reading a book or taking a class in investments. So before you start learning about the things that you need to know in a, to advance your career, think about some of the things that you actually want to know. Um, think, if, you, if you can't rediscover the joy of learning, then learning itself is just going to remain a chore and you're not going to ever want to do it again. So just to recap, the ability to continuously learn is important for both yourself, um, so for both your personal development and your career for the following reasons. It's going to open new doors. It's for your own personal growth. It's going to help you remain relevant in this day and age. It's going to improve your efficiency, increase um, your earning potential. It's going to connect you with new people. And lastly, because it's purely enjoyable. So if you're still feeling a little bit lost about some of the things that you might need to maybe go and learn, here's a couple of trending topics um, that you might be interested in. So the first one is machine learning. So machine learning is one of the most innovative and exciting fields um, moving into the future, and it's also one of the most profitable skills that you can learn. So from Alexa to Siri to chatbots to self-driving cars, there's really a lot of applications for this futuristic tech. The next one is data engineering and analytics. Like I said, this field was really not around just five years ago. And data engineering and data and analytics are slightly different. So data engineers build the infrastructure and the tools that then data scientists actually use to conduct their work. And a very interesting stat is that 84% of enterprises have launched advanced analytics and big data initiatives in their companies over the last few years um, to help them make de better decisions in their businesses. So it's definitely a very good field to get into. And the next one is UX design. So there is a difference between UX and UI design. So UX specialists do a lot of um, UI specialists, um, design interfaces for websites, they design them to look very pretty, to flow well and be easy for users to navigate. Whereas UX specialists do a lot of research and testing to consider every single element of, um, of the company and how the user is actually going to interact with it. They then liaise with developers and UI designers. And then the last one, which is my favorite one, which if you've ever been to any of my other talks, I talk about this a lot. I believe that every single person needs to learn how to code, whether it's, even if it's at a very, very basic level. Learning how to code is this underlying backbone that's really going to help you in the future. So whether you're in analysis um, or a PM, you definitely need to learn how to code, even very, very basic level. And without learning how to code, you're actually not going to be able to get into some of the trending topics that I've just spoken about. So machine learning, data analytics, learning how to code is the backbone for all of those. And if you do want to try it out, I'd recommend something like Python or R. Those are pretty good ones to learn um, if you're just starting out. And in conclusion, um, there's something I'd like you to do today. So I'd like you to go home and think about something that you'd actually like to learn. So whether it be pottery or whether you'd like to take a look at machine learning, um, I'd like you to come up with your idea. And if you need a little bit of guidance or if you just want someone to bounce some ideas off, 
at VBD, we have a community of people committed to helping you with this. And if you'd like to be part of this community, come and chat to me or come and chat to ATC and we're definitely going to be able to help you out with that. And I look forward to helping you be the hero of your own learning journey. Thank you. <laughs>